For the 6,000 that fill the seats each game night, every date that has home attached has always been worth a circle. But this season, the list of impressive visitors has made those marks a bit more bold. When the schedule came out and you see Michigan State and you see Notre Dame and you see you know, Arizona and Seattle and Butler and Washington State, everybody, you, you start to froth in the mouth a little bit. You get ready to go, your blood gets pumping and you start to imagine what's gonna be like on, on those game days. The centerpiece of the in-house schedule is one of college basketball's most storied programs. And no season ticket holder was happier to have them here than their former coach, Judd Heathcote. Well, I told Tom that you should come out and play Gonzaga so I can watch you play. Believe it or not, he scheduled a game, but I told him, whatever you do, don't play him in the kennel. Make him play in the arena. But Tom's such a good guy that he said, hey, we'll play wherever you want to play. This was important that we came here for Judd. But to come to a place like the kennel, which I've watched on TV, I'm trying to hit all the places that are famous for me uh, so that I can uh, say when I'm done that I've been everywhere. And there's only a few I haven't. The kennel was one of them. So to be able to come here and play against a guy I respect, to be able to come here where my mentor's from, and uh, be able to come here selfishly for me, it's a win-win-win. It was Tom Izzo who took over for Heathcote 17 seasons ago in East Lansing. The man that won maybe the most famous national championship keeps in close contact with the coach who's built the basketball power on that foundation. Well, the job he's done is unbelievable. Uh, when you can be in six Final Fours, you know, we won the championship in 79, and that was my third year at Michigan State. And I always thought we'll get back two or three more times. We never did. And here Tom has been there six times. Well, I'm not sure I'd be here if it wasn't for Judd and, uh, and what he's done for me, not only by hiring me, but then being the main man and, uh, and helping me get promoted, which wasn't easy coming from an assistant to a head job in a Big Ten school. He's a throwback, he's special, he's, he's something that I really appreciate, especially coming from one part of my career and now getting uh, a little older, uh, I can appreciate him even more. That same sentiment is shared right here in Spokane, where Heathcote has been a fixture at the kennel since he retired. His allegiance to Michigan State is the only one that tops his to GU. So forgive him for feeling a bit caught in the middle this week. I'm not going to sit in the war room with Tom and tell him how I think he should beat Gonzaga, as I always did at the NCAA uh, games. And uh, Mark wanted to have lunch this uh, a week and I kind of put him off. Well, if you can't do it Wednesday, can you do it Thursday? I said, no, because I really didn't want to have lunch and talk about the, the game because it's hard for me to root against Gonzaga. So I tell everyone I'm not rooting against Gonzaga. I'm rooting for Michigan State. It'll be interesting to see, you know, how this young team he has develops just like the young team that Mark has develops. I think they'll both be much better teams in March than they are right now. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give a big, warm kennel welcome to Coach Judd Heathcote and his wife, Beverly. His is a connection between two of college basketball's premier programs, a link that for at least one night, a hometown and its visitors could both appreciate. That was great. It was really cool and, uh, and well deserved. And um, you know, he's just a—he's just one of the all-time greats. He's an unbelievable, unique uh, person who's meant a lot to me and uh, my career. And I know he's meant everything to Tom and his career. And just to be able to do that with Tom and Judd and Bev was was uh, something that uh, I'll remember for the rest of my life.